Hello friends. Oh, no, that one's taken by Nathan. Hola amigos. And that's about the extent of the Spanish I know. Duolingo notwithstanding. Anyway, I'm Ted. This is the Black Pearl Voyager channel. And we've got some new additions to the Gladiator that I'd like to share with you. Hopefully you'll find this information useful or at least entertaining. Got a couple of things to talk about. We mounted some new lights at the front and the rear. We have got the new rigged spare tire carrier swing out tailgate that I'm going to be modifying for other uses, but it uh, conveniently gives me a place to finally hang my trash roo in a proper place. It also comes with the, or came with, actually it's an option, we ordered the table with it. So we now actually have a very nice cooking area to uh, hole up in that's covered and I'll go, by, I'll go over that with you here in just a minute. In addition to that, I made some electrical upgrades I think you'll find interesting and maybe useful. So come on along and we'll go over a few things. Okay, so let's talk about these Orica lights. These came courtesy of my son who didn't have a use for them on his Gladiator, so he passed them along to me. Now ordinarily they're all black, but I found a candy blue, I believe it is, uh, metallic. And uh, these lights offer uh, light when you open the door or when you come out to your vehicle and unlock it. But they also have an added bonus of uh, being side marker turn signals, which is uh, really handy because on a Jeep, um, you can only see your turn signals from either the, directly from the front or directly from the rear. And so these add a measure of safety and warning to uh, other drivers as they go by. So you just saw them flashing and um, now they're just lit and then of course they go out automatically. Really nice lights. These are the Quake LED tail lights, and they're rather unique. This was kind of an impulse buy by Monica. Uh, she really, really fell in love with these uh, at the uh, Expo Pacific Northwest in Redmond, so we couldn't resist uh, buying them. These are very unique looking. Um, the wiring was not exactly straightforward, um, especially to get them to flash sequentially like that and uh, there's a mini light bar at the bottom there you see as your backup lights and they are extremely bright and very focused uh, this is a unique look for us and um, we like them a lot really stands out they are stainless steel housings so no plastic and uh, they should last many, many years. Now this is another acquisition from Pacific Northwest Expo. Um, and this one was planned. Uh, I've been looking for a swing out tailgate in order to get my uh, spare tire out from underneath, have a place for my trash roo and to mount a table. And um, we chose the rigged designs hitch receiver style of swing out tailgate. Not only is it competitively priced, uh, about $300 less than the nearest competitor, um, it's made here in the USA and uh, it fits this build perfectly. Let me show you. Tire swings out, locks in four different positions, which is nice and we went with the optional rigged table, fold down table, that's custom made to fit this particular um, uh, swing out tailgate. 
Uh, it's made of stainless steel, brushed stainless steel. It's very nice, very well made. And it also has the pull-out cutting board. In addition to the cutting board, they include uh, hitch extension so that you can uh, tow a trailer still and still have this. In addition to that, it features another mount point so that you can carry, for instance, a bicycle rack. So I can tow a trailer, carry a bicycle rack. All for a great price. It also includes the license plate relocation and the only real downside is is that I've lost my rear view uh, backup camera and since these really weren't designed for the Jeep Gladiator nobody has a relocation uh, has made an effort to design a relocation camera for this, if you have a Toyota or one of the other uh, major brands, um, they do have a camera relocation for it. But uh, so now I'm stuck with, uh, yeah, having to check my rearview mirrors when I back out, which I do anyway. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in here. And it's not really the Blue Eddy. Uh, that is new. Um, the last couple of campouts we were on, uh, we were ran short of power. A couple of times and I'm sorry but solar just can't keep up so I came up with another solution I'll show you that here in a minute but that's the new Blue Eddy AC 180 it's an 1800 watt generator with 1152 watt hours of time and between that and 500 for my uh, Jackery and another 600 I'm about I've got about 2100 watt hours of power that I can tap into but with these new power stations, especially from Blue Eddy, I also have the EB3A, which is uh, a little under about 268 watt hours. I use that up in the tent to run my CPAP machine. And this and the Jackery will be uh, available to run the refrigerator uh, for overnight, for instance, so as not to be uh, tapping off of the uh, Jeep battery. But, let me show you the real secret behind this. Okay, here's what's actually happening here uh, behind the seat. This is an addition uh, that I made in order to charge the Blue Eddy, as you see there, and my EB3A. Um, the EB3A and this AC180 charge uh, from house power, like most of them do. And if you can provide a pure sine wave, house power, or at least it thinks it's house power, uh, that Blue Eddy will charge up in about three hours of driving time rather than about 10. Let me explain why. The Blue Eddy will charge when you plug it into the house current at about 1100 watts, 1.1 kilowatts. Can you imagine that? That takes about an hour to charge that A1C from flat to 100% about an hour and 10 minutes if you don't have house current then you're stuck using the uh, DC input and you are either plug it into your cigarette lighter at 12 volts and maybe 100 watts that would take 11 hours um, solar panel not much better unless you got a bunch of them and I only carry one 100 watt panel and if I got a full 100 watts out of it which you don't, there's some efficiency problems there. You're still looking at about 10 hours solar. So what I did was I bought a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Now 500 watts, you say, well, that, that won't support 1100 watts of charging. Well, no, it doesn't, but the Blue Eddy can be turned down to about 400 watts of charging. And that is more than enough for this it has to be a pure sine wave. Now, you're going to have to spend a little extra. Wire it directly to your battery, and you're going to want to run your Jeep or your vehicle in order to keep the battery charged. It 
provides kind of a large drain um, on your battery. So while we're traveling, I can plug this in at 0% into this and charge it at about 400, 450 watts without an issue while driving. And that's a little over two and a quarter hours. Does that sound right? About two and a quarter hours to charge that monster generator. So I've added this. It will charge the EB3A in about an hour and a half. So yeah, so much for, you know, solar panels are good if you've got sun, but uh, they're not much faster than uh, charging via the cigarette lighter cable in your car. Okay, here I've gone into my Blue Eddy app. That's the nice thing about the Blue Eddy's there, app control, and it's a very simple app. And if I go into settings, you'll see here that you have several charging modes. Standard mode, this thing will charge at 1100 watts. That's 1.1 kilowatts. Though, if you put it into silent mode, let me show you what happens. In silent mode, it charges at, looks like, 260 watts. And from 73% to 100%, it's going to take about an hour and a half. Okay, so that's a little over three hours from flat to 1152. As long as you're driving, most of us drive more than three hours. And uh, it will, uh, it will uh, top this off completely much, much faster than solar or the DC charge off of your car battery through a cigarette lighter plug. So just remember, make sure you get an inverter that's high enough in output to sustain this kind of a charge on this unit. And it has to be a pure sine wave inverter. Do not get the modified sine wave inverter. You must have the pure sine wave inverter. There is something new back here too. Let me show you what I've done. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I really loathe these cigarette lighter plugs. They're almost useless. You plug them in, they back out, or the voltage drops. They are simply awful. So, here's what I did. I cut the end off of my refrigerator plug. I was having issues with low voltage. And all I had to do usually is to come back here and twist the plug around and push it in and out and voila, the voltage would be enough to run the refrigerator. But minutes or hours later, after jostling and jiggling down the road, I'd get out and my refrigerator is in F1, low voltage. And it's all because of this damn thing. They back out, they don't ground correctly. I hate them. So I got rid of my cigarette lighter. Let's see if we can't get some light in. Okay. I got rid of my cigarette lighter output and I rewired this completely for Anderson connectors, two of them. But Ted, you say, what happens when you want to run your refrigerator off of your Blue Eddy? Now you don't have a way to plug it in. Well, actually, yes you do, because of this thing that I hate. One thing you'll notice about this particular PowerWorks is that it has Anderson connectors. <laughs> so, when I run my refrigerator overnight off the Blue Eddy or another power station, I can still do it using this adapter and uh, not have as many issues as I had bouncing and jostling down the road and having this outlet uh, come loose, drop in voltage, and, and have the refrigerator quit. So, no more cigarette lighter outlets for me. I now simply plug my refrigerator in using the Anderson power pole connectors and no more voltage drops. 
No more warm food. That's over. Plus, I still have the option of uh, plugging it into a device that has a cigarette lighter outlet like my power station and run my fridge. Okay, this was a major upgrade, something that I've been wanting for a while. And uh, there was a huge sale at Iron Man 4x4, so let me show you what we got. Oops, forgot the antenna. Always something. This is the Iron Man XTR 71 freestanding 270 degree awning. And man, what a game changer. Recently was helping out at the Hood to Coast run and uh, providing emergency communications. The first thing we did when we got there was we opened this up and drew a crowd because it was hot that day and uh, it stayed up the entire time, uh, notwithstanding the winds we had. Um, and it held up great. This is a fantastic addition to our build. This comes with an added bonus. We now have a really nice covered area for cooking. Yes, this is going to be nice. We've got a trip planned out on the San Rafael Swell here in the middle of October and I have a feeling we're going to be using this quite a bit. Okay, next up on our improvements involves water yeah over the years you know we have discovered uh, different uh, ways of carrying around water uh, originally i started out with the old tried and true property of u.s government jerry can looking thing this was inspired by coyote works and it was the first water storage device i bought uh, you saw me heft it up here. Water is 8 pounds a gallon. This thing is 40 pounds all by itself. This is a 5 gallon container that we switched up to because, well, it's a little bit more convenient shape. It's got handles on it. I'm not sure that this is 5 gallons, but pretty close. Easy to fill, easy to clean. You can actually get your hands in here. And then you've got, you've got a spigot for water. Now what we discovered was, first of all, don't put your water jugs out of reach. <laughs> put them on the tailgate of your truck. Uh, make them accessible as soon as you open the tailgate or figure out a way, like we did, to have some running water. One of the things we had trouble with most was dust and dirt. And all you had to do was get out of your truck and handle something and your hands were absolutely filthy. Um, and with no running water, well, you're kind of stuck. Um, and if the water is inaccessible, it makes it really inconvenient at a stop, for instance, to empty out whatever is in front of your water 
and then get it out on the tailgate. Anyway, it was a hassle. This is a fantastic jug. It's very durable. It'll fit in a jerry can um, mount, which I thought I might use on this swing out uh, tailgate table. But it's kind of wasteful because you're opening up the cap and you're letting it glug out, glug, 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 while you're washing your hands. And it probably uses twice or three times the amount of water that you need to just to wash the dirt off your hands. So we came up with a different solution and it's one that might work for you. But first, we need to get rid of these. For these, yeah, this is the Dometic solution. Um, this provides us with six gallons in two separate containers with some nice carrying handles. So these are a little bit easier to tote, uh, being about uh, only 20 pounds as opposed to 40, maybe 25. Anyway, so these are only like 24 pounds. And they come with this added feature that allows us to have running water in camp. Yes, and only the amount you need, enough to wash your hands, shut it off. Uh, yeah, these are fantastic. Uh, they're a good size and shape. Uh, they're easy to pack, stow away. And uh, if you keep them accessible, you'll always have uh, some water. Uh, they also have a pretty nice feature here. I don't know if you can see this or not. I uh, mounted the um, metal plate here on the tailgate uh, so that these can be stuck to the side of your truck, except not this one because it's aluminum. Uh, there's plates that are included with it so you can stick it to the top of your um, water can. And they each come with a spigot option that you can mount in this spot here. And you can tap water a little more quickly. I think probably the biggest downside of the Dometic, and this is rechargeable by the way, it also has a light, uh, is that it's, it's rather slow. Um, and I don't have any problem with that. We're only talking about uh, about a minute. It will automatically fill a one liter uh, container without uh, attending it at all. Um, it just shuts off after about a liter. So there's that. So that's our solution. Now I realize the other two jugs are probably more budget minded. And when we first started, um, we were a little bit more budget minded, but this build has been kind of gradual. And so we started out with uh, only what we needed and those items served as well. And now we're looking for a little bit more luxury and so we're willing to spend a little bit more money to uh, make our lives a little easier on the trail. And that's the way it's gonna be for most of you because you don't need all of this stuff that I've just showed you to go over landing. Just get in a reliable high clearance vehicle, preferably four wheel or all wheel drive with good tires, that's the main thing, and get out there. So that's about it guys. I think we're going to be much more comfortable out on the trails here if we get a chance. It's been kind of a slow summer uh, between work and a wedding and we haven't gotten out too much. But uh, we've had other projects also. Okay, you've seen how easily this unfolded. Let's put it back. And now bear in mind this is only about the third time or so and it takes a little bit of um, experimentation in order to fold the fabric up in such a way that it doesn't uh, uh, end up uh, too much on one end or the other, making it hard to zip together. So just bear with me on that. Keep that in mind.
Got to straighten out the fabric, make sure it's nice and straight. And then I take this whole mess here and fold it up to about here. Kind of over that top rail. Oh, I missed one. Zoopaloo. Then I take this and kind of fold it up like that. Now there's a strap up here on top. I guess I haven't learned how to find it yet. Come on, where is it? Oh, okay. It's gonna be behind the cover. There we go. All right, for some of you that are not quite as tall, this might be a bit of a chore. And I suspect it'll get easier as I get better at it. But this way you don't have so much bound up here. All right, find the other. Here we go. There it is. And you get a lot of leverage pulling on these straps. I try to gather it up and make sure everything is as tight as possible. So I guess it would be easier <laughs> to make sure that the cover here is nice and exposed before you try this. Yes, okay. Now let's see if she'll zip together. This is always the toughest end, but these are really good high quality zippers. But I still don't like to pull on them to the point where they give up and break, because they will. Okay. And there you have it. Just that simple. Oh. What did that take me? Two minutes? Anyway, get one of these. They're cool. Again, I started out with a simple two-legged awning that mounts simply, is very light, rolls out, and that worked fine. The problem was is sometimes we wouldn't deploy it because it was a bit of a hassle to put away. And if we weren't gonna be someplace very long, or if there was no threat of rain or high temperatures, we didn't bother to put it out. This, you can pull into a rest area and deploy it in under 60 seconds. Have a nice meal underneath, spend the last two minutes before you climb in, uh, zipping it back together. Oh, and uh, don't forget your whip, put it back. There you go, good buddy. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed our little upgrade video. Maybe get some ideas. And Monica and I, thank you a lot for following along on our channel. Be looking for some more videos coming up. Uh, I did a sneak peek a couple weeks ago about the new Bronco Heritage. Uh, I'll be doing a review and a walk around on that. So uh, there's a few things to look forward to. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, you know the rest. Bye.